here we are at Cooper MMA. I'm Mark Elston, this is Sean Cooper, and uh, I had a request from uh, Andrew Ashkettle to uh, talk about judo uh, grip fighting and stance, so we're gonna do that. Um, when you're doing judo, uh, generally you uh, establish a grip. Uh, I use the little three fingers of my hand. I've talked about this before. I want to uh, take the loose part of the collar, wrap it with those three fingers, take out all the slack. My thumb and my index finger are along for the ride. They're there, but there's no pressure whatsoever with them. And even the little fingers are all relaxed. Uh, if he pulls out, try, I will go with him. It's not a problem. But if I'm tight and he pulls out, I lose everything. The same thing with the collar. Uh, if, if I can take this little sort of groove at the edge of the collar and make a pocket, I'll put my fingers in there. And once again, the thumb and the index finger are along for the ride. I like to loosen my opponent's gi. Uh, it gives me a little bit more room and uh, it makes it a little harder for them to break the grip. All right, uh, I want my stance to be in front of him. I always, always want my knees bent a little bit. And my weight is on the balls of my feet, never on my heels. When we move, I'm going to keep my feet at shoulder width. All right, so when we move, you'll notice that I'm, it's like these little half moons. And same thing, if I go the other direction. I always want my feet as close to shoulder width apart as possible. And notice that our knees are bent. If you're straight, it's much easier to be taken off balance. If we go in a circle, um, I make little sliding steps. I don't ever want my feet to come together. If my feet come together, Sean will sweep me. Oh, oh. <laughs> right? So, always keep your feet wide, but not super wide. Now I'm off balance, forwards and back. So, shoulder width. So, I want to be able to break these grips. If whoever has more control with the grip has a huge advantage in terms of being able to do whatever throws they want to do. Now, there are a lot of non-standard, different kinds of grips. Tons of them. The general principle in breaking grips is pretty much the same. Uh, in judo, you're not allowed to do two against one. Used to be able to, now you can't. Jiu-Jitsu, absolutely. I want to be strong. I'm gonna, like, no. And then immediately, anytime I break a grip, you must immediately attack. All right, but how do you break a grip with only one hand? All right, um, let's switch around. For this collar grip, this is in many ways the more difficult one to break. So I need to use leverage. I'm controlling his hand. I'm going to, remember I said I like a loose collar? I'm gonna tighten my collar, and now I'm going to step back. So, make this strong on the sleeve, tighten, make space. That breaks the grip, and when I return, I'm immediately attacking. Maybe Suyonagi, uh, Koshi Garuma, Sodomaki Komi, something. Right? For the sleeve, uh, I can use big body movement in the same way. My feeling about that, personally, I'm not crazy about that. Uh, the reason being that it gives him a chance to respond. When I do this, he's pulled. He's a little off balance. But if I do this on this side, he's not. He can come right in. So I prefer a more subtle grip break. I like to, 
I'm going against the thumb. Now, if he's got a strong grip, boy, that really makes it easy. <laughs> but if he's got a good, nice, flexible, light grip the way I do, it's a lot more difficult to go. All right, so I wrap around and come straight up. Sometimes, even when I do that, it's not enough. Oh, then I go the other way. <laughs> All right. All right. So, this is best, if it doesn't work, the other way generally will, because they're fighting one direction. So you always want to go in the direction that they're helping you in, which is the one opposite for fighting. So let's uh, talk a little bit about some of the other grip breaks from some of the more non-standard grips. So you understand a collar and a sleeve. Uh, if he's got an uh, around the waist, one of these back grip breaks. Here, well here, uh, my, best attack, my best defense is an attack. So uh, if he's got an underhook, the first thing I want to do, if I can't throw him immediately, I'm going to go into a whizzer. I'm going to take my arm, come down strong, and bring it forward. Then I will establish this grip on the other side. And now he is completely compromised. I have Uchimata. I have numerous sacrifice mm. techniques. Mm. Uh, if it's BJJ, I have a standing choke. So from the underhook, I want to go for a whizzer. If he's got an overhook, uh, grab my back, yeah, that's right. This is a, uh, some of the Russian grips. Uh, Greco-Roman people really like this. He's pulling me in tight. I've got a real problem here. And once again, I may try and go for some kind of attack, but if he's got good position and good posture, I've got to get out of here first, all right? Most obvious thing for me to do is to push him away and duck under. Again, all right, so that's one thing I can do. Uh, again, an experienced guy who's using this grip has an answer for that. So, if he, uh, so when he's coming in, my most efficient uh, way of dealing with this is to go over his head. So instead of worrying about this grip, now I do this one and down. And now this grip is doing him no good at all. Mm -hmm. So he's got me in tight. Usually they'll use their chin, your head under my chin. Yeah, this is pretty typical of this kind of grip. It's pretty miserable. So I want to get away from it, back up, over. All right? Nice. nice. So a little introduction to uh, stance and grip breaking. Fabulous, fabulous, Mark. All right. If you've enjoyed the video, please click like and subscribe to our channel, Ser Yoku Zenyo, meaning maximum efficiency. If you click on the bell, you can get the videos as soon as they are posted. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thanks, Mark. Awesome.